So we just saw in the video how an example might look for calculating variance and standard deviation, but now I want to talk to you about the formulas. And so I do want to differentiate between the population and the sample formula. The population, remember, this is more theoretical in nature. If we could measure everyone in the world, this is how it would look, versus the sample, which is when we calculate for what we actually have. So this is the formula for the population, and I'm going to walk through it, but I want to point out this first symbol here. This is sigma. Sigma is a Greek letter. It kind of looks like an upside down Q. And that's to tell us that we're looking at the population and then variance. But the fact that it's squared is telling us it's the variance. That's to remind us that these are squared units. And it's doing exactly what we had done on the previous uh, video, which is looking at the average amount by which the scores deviated from the mean, but they're squared. So let's walk through this. It is saying we took each score minus the mean. Remember we had said, oh, you have a score of one minus, I expected it to be a 1.5. So we took each score minus the mean. Then we squared them. Once we did that for every score, then we summed them up. And once we summed up all the scores, we divided by how many there were. That was to give us the average amount of squared deviations. So while this looks kind of scary in formula form, it is exactly what we did in the previous video. And that's for the population. Now I want to talk about the sample. So the sample looks somewhat similar, but a little different. You'll notice here we have Roman letters, S. This is to remind us that we are dealing with samples. So this is S squared, which tells us it's the variance. It's calculated much the same way. We took each score minus the mean. We squared them. We took all of them and summed them up. And now instead of dividing by N, we divided by N minus one. So this is where the theory and the practice of our true samples start to deviate. And it's always going to be the variability that causes problems. The mean was um, the same formula for both the population and the sample. So I'm always going to say things like the mean is the mean is the mean. The mean is never the problem. It's the variability that's the problem. And I'm going to explain right now why variability is a problem in this case. Let's say this is our population. Uh, and we could say that it uh, is height or something. If I don't know anything about you and you walk in the room and I try to guess your height, my best guess would be to guess what the mean is because that's in the middle of the distribution. You can see that most people are around the mean. See how this rises up to here. So most people are going to be right in here. Let's say though, we'll think about the people that are very deviant, <laughs> not deviant in hype, like in a bad way, but they are not like everyone else. These people on the outsides of the distributions. Do you see how inherently they are rare? So let's say that we're going to find somebody that is, um, uh, I don't know, seven two, right? Am I likely to find someone who's seven foot tall, two inches? That's kind of rare to find someone that tall. And so if I'm just grabbing a sample of people, let's say 15 people, am I likely in that 15 group of people? to find someone up here who's 7'2". It's unlikely because those people are so very, very rare that it's unlikely that in my small sample of 15 I would find them. And same with people who are very short, right? If I'm looking for someone who's maybe 4'8", uh, those people are so rare that in my small sample size, it's unlikely I would have grabbed them. Now, if I grabbed the whole world, they would be in there because those people exist in the world. But if I'm just taking a small sample, my sample is likely to just include these people that are very popular in the middle. And so what theorists have noticed is that their samples tend to underestimate the variability of the population. Because this is the true variability of the entire world, but then in the sample, it's really only getting the middle section. And what's really interesting is that even though this is a big problem, we constantly are underestimating the population variance. The whole goal of statistics is to truly try to understand what the population is doing. There's a very simple fix. The simple fix is just adding minus one in the denominator. If we subtract one from the denominator, we've fixed all the problems. Well, close enough. So think about this. Like, let's say you have a, a pizza come into your house and you have five friends and you have to split your pizza up amongst the five friends and then let's say one of your friends has been studying stats all day and he crashes on the couch and falls asleep and now you have only four people you have to feed with that pizza this is kind of like what you've done here here's your five friends then this one friend passes out from studying so hard so now there's only four in the denominator what does that do to your piece of pizza does it get bigger or does it get smaller your piece of pizza is going to get 
bigger because there's fewer people to divide it up. And so what this minus one in the denominator is doing is kind of um, altering the mathematics to make this number larger than it was going to be to fix the problem that our samples tend to underestimate the population. So this is a nice fix. So now that the sample variance more closely resembles the population variance. So this is the first time we've seen that our population and our sample calculations are not the same. And it's another reason why I want to make sure you understand the difference between the two and to know which formula to use. So now that we've talked about the variance formula, it's very simple to move forward with the standard deviation formula. If this isn't making sense, maybe go back to the video where we went through the examples with some actual data. But the standard deviation is just the square root of the variance, which makes the units go back to their original form. So rather than square dogs, we now have dogs. So for the population, we're still going to use sigma. That's to remind ourselves that this is the population. The sigma squared is variance. If we square root that, it turns into sigma. And now this is saying the standard deviation of the population. Now, if I go over here to the sample, then you might have thought, well, S squared, that doesn't sound like variance, but it works out nicely because if we do S squared, which is variance of the sample, then we square root it, that turns into S, and S for standard deviation works out nicely. Now, I have to say in my years of teaching, these symbols are where a lot of students get um, hiccups. The difference between variance and, and standard deviation for the sample and variance and standard deviation for the population. This is one of those things where it's just easy to or easier to try and practice it as much as possible. And then what will happen is by the time we're three weeks in, you will have mastered these symbols. But it does take a little bit of practice just writing down, okay, this is the standard deviation for the population. This is the variance for the population. This is the standard deviation for the sample. This is the variance for the sample. Okay.